Okay, there we go. So it happened, and I deserved it. I took a five hundred dollar loss. So if you're hating on me, that's okay. I get where you're coming from. Um, I would hate on me too. I'm pretty annoyed myself for taking on this loss, but it's deserved. So the lessons I derive from here is that I rushed into this trade and I didn't follow my trading strategy, which is stupid, right? If I pull out the elaborate version of the text I've written over here, it looks somewhat like this. Oh, no, don't tell me I've lost this recording. Oh. Okay, does that work? Yes. So as I made mention to you, there is a certain checklist that we follow, okay? Especially with my top system. Trend direction is the first thing that's written over there. It falls under market structure. And how we get trend direction is by looking at the higher frame. So move that out the way. If I look at the higher time frame, that would be a step in the right direction towards depicting trend direction because we get the trend direction given to us by the way in which the transition is heading on the higher time frame. I didn't do that. To be honest with you, I didn't even have it set up. So that plus, I got to take on the face. I would say on the chin, but it's more like the whole face <laughs> got covered. Um, and and this is what happens when you don't follow a system. Even guys like myself kind of want to rush into things. We get overly excited. We've got other stuff on the go. And when you bypass the structure, a plan, a system, the smart way of doing things, you land up with the loss. Your account pays for it. Um, and it's just a part of trading. All right. So I guess I want to take this advantage to bring on a a quick study as to how to set up the higher time frames so we now get a clear understanding of what's going on on the lower time frames and why this didn't go up instead it just crumbled and head down so as you see here i work with market cycles market cycles give me the start and the finish of where the 10 turning point system exists okay so we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten you'll learn how to forecast as to where the correct location of those are through my um, paid course um, if you want to take it or just hang around and maybe you see a pattern by sticking around uh, these videos okay so what I'm going to do is I need a first scale where 9 to 10 is going to be by following the system script let's do the, do the full thing right so I'll leave that over there. If I click away, it goes away. If I do that, it comes back. Good. All right, so ten, trend direction. I'm not going to go to the higher frame uh, on this. My software has the 2048, which is the higher time frame from here. Trading view doesn't give us that option. So the 512 is the highest time frame we're going to work with. Um, so in terms of trend direction, we don't have a higher frame to go on. But I'm um, just going on the extent of this uptrend. So it goes five, six, seven, eight. So six was below four, seven and below five. So there was a bit of iffiness over here, trend directional change, eight above six, seven above five, nine above seven. So this means higher highs, higher lows. And it's been in for about a five wave sequence. It's typically about now that we could see a trend directional change. Let's see if that's accurate. So just by going on that, because it's been quite like a long elongated um, uptrend, I think we could just by that alone see a lower high trying to form, which is quite interesting. I'm very interested in the timing of this to see whether or not it collides with the US elections and if the overall trend for the US elections is down over that time, which means that basically the technical analysis will be ahead of whatever result transpires during the election. And the poor presidential elect will actually get the blame of what happens in the markets when it's kind of not got much to do with them. It's got more to do with the positions of the 
numerology, astrology, and other stuff I've been talking about. So less about that, more about the, the following through on this. So the reason I suppose as to why I wanted to depict whether or not we're going to be up trend, uptrend or downtrend is because that will set the scaling of my GAN square. Okay, so a conservative scaling means that we are going to remain in uptrend. A more spacious and larger set GAN square shows us more that things are leaning in towards a downtrend. Um, or because we identified it as a potential downtrend. All right, so that's scaling. And I want to put that down as such. I'm also just working with this danger zone or this kill zone, anything behind this red line. Then I'm going to leave things for there for now. I'll let it play out. Okay, so in terms of uh, the system, which I should have actually used yesterday, trend direction, it's still an uptrend, but it's on the other side of a long uptrend. I think we're going to have a trend directional change. And again, I'm curious to see the timing of that because of the US election over the next few weeks. Turning point spacing is good. We've got uh, the last high of the cycle in the second half of the quadrant four. My students will understand what that means. Um, with this kind of thing, once you learn the, uh, the information, it's like getting on a bike, right? Once you learn how to ride a bike, you never forget how to ride a bike. It's the same thing over here. Um, so if it seems a little bit daunting up front, I have broken it down into a core structure so that it makes sense in a better way. Uh, scaling, as I mentioned to you, depends on um, the trend. The uh, kill zone, which is the danger zone over here, is still where price is. So because price is in here, I want to take that off, um, and you'll see why later. The time uh, projection, so this is where I'm going to be interested right now. So what I'm going to do is just set up where the likely location is for this to be. I think anyway, so it could be quite a, a, a shot, like a fast move down by the look of it. And this is where I get my probability box. It might sound like I'm over all over the place, but once you've done, once you've done this enough times, it's second nature. So basically, for the time being, I'm going to block off this area, and for the time being, I'm going to block off. that area all right because i'm going through my system over here systematically to see what's probable and what's not probable cube root um all i need to do is just get the length of the previous move so there to there is the equivalent of 31 bars 31 bars then goes into this little tool that i've got And then it gives us the output. So I'm looking at 22 and 43. So 22 also agrees with price coming out to round about here. All right, so I'm going to delete that. And I think because of it, I want to block off this upper section. And because we've got two confirmations of price being in that area, pardon me. Block off that section as well. All right. The point I'm trying to get across here, even if you don't understand the information that I'm putting down, is that you've got to have a system. 
I paid my price yesterday, $500, and to thin air, the market just uh, absorbed that because I rushed into the market. I didn't follow the system systematically and check off all the elements that were going to save my capital. Um, it's something I could have avoided, but I didn't because I'm human and stupid sometimes. Uh, but overall, the reason why my traders go from we don't know what to do to succeeding is because they've got a step-by-step -step process that they follow every single transition high to low follow that process low to high follow that process if you don't have something like that for yourself and you don't want to use mine make sure that you've got your own make sure that you follow that system i'm speaking about experience has taught me that it's not worth not following a system okay and again a recent example of it was yesterday where I should have done it, I didn't, and I paid the price for it. The inverse of that is you do do it, it protects your capital, and you comfortably rake in the profits as if it's owed to you, as if you deserve it, because you do, right? You follow the system, you've respected money, you respected the timing of the market, and now it's your turn to earn on that. If you respect money, money will respect you back. And a system and a plan and all those things are the things that are going to get you in a good relationship with money and the markets. All right. Um, again, if I'd just gone up one time frame and, and it wasn't lazy and jumping it back onto Bitcoin or hyped up and I actually just followed the method, I would have seen that the, the, the oscillator is very open here in terms of uh, going down the process. Oscillator was just showing that there's still an obvious downtrend happening on Bitcoin overall. Um, so that's that's my stupidity. Um, the price projection, as I said, because of trend, I think we're going to see it dipped around the lower uh, 60,000s again for all of these reasons made mention to. And then the fan line, the way that it travels, is likely going to be something in line with that. Okay, so, so I want to put it somewhere in the middle for now. Um, the arc curve over here stops at arc three. Again, my students will understand what it means. Uh, once you're on the bicycle, it's just like second knowledge or second nature. And yeah, just in terms of opening a trade on this, am I allowed to open up a trade? So just having a look at this probability algorithm that I've put together based on market conditions. Let's see whether or not it's going to work out or if I wanted to look like an idiot in public and take on a loss. All right, so trend direction. Getting into a trade now, theoretically, is counter trend. But because we can't wait for the, these high time frames to finish their transitions all the time, it takes days. I want to allow myself to go counter trend on this as there has been a long uptrend already. So the switch over here is going to take us down um, to potential downtrend. So I'm going to stick with that for the time being. So I'm going to leave that as is. I wouldn't normally tick it if I was on a lower time frame. I'm going to leave it as is here. Turning point spacing, I'm happy with, so I'm going to leave that ticked. Scaling, I'm happy with, leave that ticked. Price is still in kill zone, so it's a point against opening up a trade right now. Um, the time projection, I'm happy with. Cube root, which is a, like a second confirmation on time projection, I'm happy with. The oscillator switched in down, I'm happy with. Price works with the, the above, I'm happy with. Fan line arc of. So now we've got a story. Now we've got a story of the checklist going, this is probably what's going to happen. This is the highest probability outcome based on every single um, attribute, element, criteria that uh, we've considered. I've also got a, a, a reward level in the app. So we've got um, the different levels of risk reward ratio. So this one is going to be a three because it's all the way down here. So if you put it in a position here, it's going to get to one is to three down there. And then we'll see whether or not we have the allowance by the probability-based system, algorithm, whatever you want to call it, to get in. So the fact that this is here means that we can get in. So if this wasn't here, let's say, for example, we just weren't sure of these top elements or a configuration of these other ones, I would say, sorry, Buster, forget about it. Don't get in. The criteria is not met. 
Don't trade this. And that's how you protect your account responsibly, just by the way. So because it is, I'm going to get back and see where the start and the finish line is for these two. The start is at the top, which is 696. I'm going to call it 69639. Okay. Then it finishes off at about 5,800. That's just the size of this um, GAN square. And it's going to give me my targets thereafter. So my portion of account is 10%. So if you are uh, working with private capital, it'll be 10%. Or if you're working with prop firm capital, like myself, then it'll be kind of 1%, which works out to be 10%. And that's another just high level discussion for another time, just come to think of it. It gives us our entry. So our entry is 65,871. Where's price at the moment? That's 664,500. I'm going to get it now. I'm going to get it now. So again, maybe... I'll, I'll pay the price later. I'm not going to wait for 65,871. So I'm going to open my position here. And then risk protection, we try to find a better way uh, of call, um, of naming a stop loss. So risk protection was the, the threshold. And that is, of course, behind 20.9, the recent high over there. The reward level, I want to aim for, let's go for... Reward level two, 58,300. And if you're working with prop firms, this will give you your uh, volume size, but you don't need that anymore because I very cleverly designed a tool that works inside MetaTrader directly that will handle your proportion, uh, your trade portion sizing, the thresholds, automatically put in a stop loss, automatically put in a take profit, and get the correct dollar value version of what your size should be um, based on the lots and um, volume sizes that are by default provided for you. That's high level stuff. If you don't understand what that means, just allow it to go over your head. Uh, just take take the core from this lesson. This, the lesson for what you've just learned here is that to achieve patience and timing, the correct amount of patience, the power behind patience, and the right timing, you need to follow a system. Because if you get the timing right, then the price that the correct timing has follows. I want to stop there. It's another topic. I'm all over the show when it comes to trying to get everything out at once. So let's just, let's just stick to the power of patience. So patience isn't something that you should use um, as a standalone quality or attribute. Like just because you're patient doesn't mean you're correctly patient. The power behind correctly said patience comes from utilizing a system and that's the point of this video is that utilizing a system provides so many protections and so many advantages to your trading and it also protects you against yourself so if you trade with the system and you can stick to the rules the markets are basically handed to you on a platter and that's the takeaway for today or for this video so hopefully amongst the bundle of value shared over there, you've taken some good notes. And even if you take one or two notes from the video, this is the, the, the difference between you doing okay and struggling in the markets versus leveling up to becoming a successful trader. All right, that's it for today. I want to say that's it for now. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.